That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Dear God, I got asked a question earlier today on Locals about trading away a 2025 first round pick. I get asked regularly on a daily basis about trading away 2024 first round picks. Have y'all not realized this yet? Have you not realized the turnover rate in Dynasty Fantasy Football? How easy, it's extremely easy for your great juggernaut Dynasty team where you're trading away a 2024 first thinking you're trading away the 110, the 111. That team can fall apart in the blink of an eye. In this video, I'm going to do my best to illustrate this. I'm going to do my best to really caution everybody, to caution dynasty owners, to caution dynasty commissioners about the risk associated with trading away future draft picks, not 2023, of course. You should be able to trade away your 2023 first. You should be able to go out there and trade for someone else's 2023 first. And if you're a commissioner and you make the league owners pay when they trade away their future first, whether that's a 2023 or a 2024, that's understandable. And hell yeah, if they are paying that league's dues, let them trade away their 2024 first. But beyond that, it gets dicey. So I'm going to go back three years ago and I'm going to look at dynasty drafts look at dynasty ADP and we're gonna see how many players that were first round startup picks how many players that were second round startup picks and so on are just not relevant at all anymore but of course before we get into it please go down there drop a like on this live stream subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already and Leave a comment letting me know some players that you think are actually going to fall off. And what's going to be fun is we're looking at Dynasty drafts from three years ago. We are going to come up with bust rates. And I am going to do my best to say, okay, well, um, three years ago, two players out of the top 12 in Dynasty drafts, they are now really nothing at all. I'm going to go and look at Dynasty drafts today and try to pick out two players that I think are going to completely fall off with their Dynasty value. And of course, we're going to get a lot of hate for it. But if you have your opinions, I would love to hear them in the comment section. And let's just dive right into this round one back in 2019. And what we are doing here is we are looking at Dynasty League ADP. This comes from DynastyLeagueFootball.com. Thank them for going out and gathering all this information for a very long time. They have ADP back to 2014. Not a sponsor by any means. You have to pay for it, but it is what it is. I paid for it. So let's go through and let's look at this. So they had round one back in 2019. You had Saquon Barkley at the 101, Christian McCaffrey, 102, Elliot Kamara, Hopkins, Beckham, Adams, Michael Thomas, Juju Smith-Schuster, Todd Gurley, Melvin Gordon, and Mike Evans going round one. Now, of course, there are some names that have fallen off a decent amount. Of course, Juju Smith-Schuster, Michael Thomas, Odell Beckham Jr. aren't worth nearly as much as they previously were. But still, I mean, if you're looking at Michael Thomas, if you're looking at Juju Smith-Schuster, they have value. So we're not going to say, you know what? You took DeAndre Hopkins in the first round in 2019, and now he's going in the sixth round. That's a bust. No, we're not doing that at all because that's expected. You expect when you draft those 28, 29-year-old players that their value is going to decrease. We are talking about the players that are no longer being drafted in the top 100 picks of dynasty startups. So if you do some quick math real quick, you are going to see that there were three players, a third, a third of the player pool that was a first round startup pick have completely fallen off the cliff. And if we go over and if we look at current dynasty drafts, I, I know we're going to get hate for doing this, but right now in the first round, you got Chase, Jefferson, Jonathan Taylor, Najee Harris, Kyle Pitts, McCaffrey, Lamb, Cup, Swift, Debo, Javante, and AJ Brown. And our goal here is just to illustrate. I, I'm just trying to illustrate how easy it is to look at all these players and say, oh, psh, Mason, are you kidding me? Are, every single one of these guys is going to be viable three years from now. Every single one of these players is going to be around in Dynasty Startups. No, that's not going to be the case. And if I had to identify a couple of these players that I think could end up failing, I think you could have Debo Samuel falling off a cliff. Now, of course, I, I, I don't want to say it's going to happen. I don't want to say you shouldn't draft Debo Samuel in the third round of your dynasty startup. Hell yeah, go get him in the third round. That's a great value. But we're just painting 
Worst case scenario here. Worst case scenario with these individual players because we know, we know that some of these guys are going to fall off that cliff and we are just guessing on who. With Debo Samuel, you can see it in the range of outcomes. This is a wide receiver that dealt with injuries in college, had to stay five years in South Carolina because of his injuries. This is a wide receiver that dealt with injuries pretty much every single year outside of this past season and on top of this he's a very unique player in how he is used in that offense and if for whatever reason he moves on from the 49ers and or maybe he doesn't fit well with Trey Lance you you could see that happening so we're going to list Debo Samuel as a potential fall off obviously Christian McCaffrey is going to be the easy answer to go to because with McCaffrey this is a player that I would say if McCaffrey comes out say week three this year and it's dumb luck. He'd say even if he had the same probability of tearing an ACL and everybody else in the NFL. In week three, he tears his ACL. Where's he going in startup drafts next year? I don't, I'm not sure he would be a top 100 pick. And that's crazy to say, of course, because he does have more upside than anybody else. But last time we saw any production at all is 2019. And I'm trying to illustrate the point here that dynasty drafters would just be done. They would just wash their hands of Christian McCaffrey. So what if you go out there, you draft CMC, you draft Debo Samuel. And if I had to pick one other player, keep in mind, these guys are all studs. There's a reason they're going round one of one quarterback dynasty startup leagues. I would pick AJ Brown. I don't want to have to try to do that to the man, but we have to pick someone and we would go with Brown. And now you're going to see as we go further and further down, the rate of these players just completely getting washed out, of course it increases because the best players are going to be drafted at the top. The players with the highest floor and ceiling combination would have been going in round one. So as we go down to round two, there were four players in this round that now have no dynasty value whatsoever. I mean, you have David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, and Julio Jones. Now I understand definitely, and I agree with you, the point that these are older options. You drafted these players three years ago and you said, well, yeah, I, I'm not necessarily expecting that David Johnson is going to maintain his value for the next three years. I'm not expecting that Le'Veon Bell is going to maintain his value over the next three years, but hell, they can still go ahead and they can give me production to make this pick worth it. And what's funny, if we go through and if you look at these players, this is uh, the perfect round to kind of go to because I know a lot of people are going to have an issue with this video and saying, hell Mason, this makes no sense because we are trading away those picks and we're not looking at dynasty ADP. We're looking at production. We're looking at production and where those picks end up. I'm not trading away our 2024 first round pick. And then all of a sudden crying about it. A Le'Veon Bell has no value two to three years down the line. As long as he gave me that running back one season, well, you go, you look at Le'Veon Bell. Um, last time we saw a thousand, Yard season, 2017. So you drafted him. You had no production whatsoever. We can say the same thing here with David Johnson. With David Johnson, you went out of your way. You drafted him in 2019. No, his value didn't maintain, but he didn't give you production either. This is a running back that has not had a thousand yard season since 2016. So you're drafting these players in the second round. And even if you're saying, okay, well, I'm not drafting them for their value to maintain. I'm drafting them for the production. You're not getting that production going over to Antonio Brown. Another one of these players that failed drafted him in 2019. You know how many years you had with a thousand yard season afterwards, total of zero. Well, you can go look at Julio Jones. Let's just continuously pull up these veterans with Julio Jones here, drafting him in 2019. That was the last year he had a thousand yards. He had 1300 yards with 15 games played afterwards, just the complete fall off. Now, if we pull this up, if we look at a bus rate of four, I, I could even say that there are some names on here that have lost a considerable amount of value. I mean, at some point, think last off season, James Conner had no value. Now, of course, he's in a great situation in Arizona now, so he's not going to make this list. But nonetheless, if we go over and we look at this year's set, Hall, Higgins, Metcalf, Waddle, Tyreek, Devontae Adams, Austin Eckler, Saquon Barkley, Stefan Diggs, Joe Mixon, Mark Andrews, Deontay Johnson. Kind of in a similar situation. Like if you're looking at these players, everybody is going to agree. You know what, Mason? Yeah, I'm not drafting Devontae Adams. I'm not drafting Tyree Kill for their value to increase in three years. I'm drafting them for that production. But that's where you were. That's where you were projecting David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, Julio Jones, Antonio Brown. 
a few years ago. Now, of course, just because those players failed, that's not to say that every single one of these veterans are going to fail. But it is to say we have to look at our past choices and we have to remember the confidence you had in those veterans at the time you selected them. And you need to understand in the range of outcomes that these players could be done as is. These players could fall off like that, which is unlikely, but hell, we are, we are four for four with it happening last time. And if we we're looking at these veteran guys in this round, if I had to project a couple of these players to be valueless or close to it for three years down the line, I would go Barkley, just because you can see it in the range of outcomes, very similar to Christian McCaffrey, where Barkley, I'm not saying you shouldn't be drafting him in startups right now, but I am saying it's in the range of outcomes that if he goes out there, tears his ACL in week three, where's the dynasty community valuing him? He would plummet, plummet further than any other player in this range. I would also go with the Tyree Kill if I was having to project someone because you could easily see, oh, the story of a speedy aging wide receiver going, getting paid to be the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL, but going from Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes with the second best wide receiver on that team being Nicole Hardman to Tua Tagovailoa with the second best receiver on that team being Jalen Waddle. You could easily see a Tyreek Hill would take that fall off. And if I had to guess a couple other plays, we'd go Austin Eckler, just aging running back, easy to go to. I would go with Joe Mixon as well. Now with Joe Mixon, younger than a couple of these other options, but was drafted in 2017, going into year three of his second contract. So if I had to pick four names, that's where we would be going. But now let's go. Let's just continuously do this. And I hope you're beginning to see the point here. I, I hope you're beginning to see that you cannot act like your dynasty team is certainly a contender. You cannot act like you are certainly going to be in the fold and you are going to be going out there and dominating over the next three seasons. So it doesn't matter if you trade away your 2024 first. Let's go to round three where you have Kittle, Cooks, Ertz, Carrion, Adam Thielen, Leonard Fournette, AJ Green, Galladay, Jacobs, Hilton, Geis, and Sony Michelle. Over half this round, this is round three of your Dynasty startup. I mean, right now in Dynasty startups, if you look at round three, I'm pretty sure we are all assuming that those round three picks smash. If you go out there and you draft J.K. Dobbins in round three, you're never taking Dobbins going, oh, yeah, I'm happy I just drafted a running back four in fantasy. No, that's not your thought process. Your thought process is, oh, okay, well, yeah, J.K. Dobbins looking great, efficient running offense. This is a team that wants to pound the ball over and over again, an elite athlete. Yeah, he'll be a low in running back one in fantasy. But, hell, let's see Ertz, carry on AJ Green, Galladay, Hilton, Geis, and Sony all failing. And if we have to go over and we have to pick some players in round three, it kind of gets gross. Now, there are some easy names to pick. Like, you can go to Travis Kelsey and say, hell, in three years, Travis Kelsey is going to be 36. Of course, his value is going to be nowhere. The reason you're drafting Kelsey is for him to give you that production right now. But as we've already illustrated, just because you're taking an aging veteran where you're acknowledging that his value is going to go down, you're just doing it for production. Production's not guaranteed. We don't know. Maybe Kelsey falls off this season. Maybe he starts dealing with injuries. And if we go over and look at some of the veteran names, you got easy ones to pick out. You have Alvin Kamara. You have Nick Chubb. You have Dalvin Cook. All in a similar age range. But then you have an issue in picking out the younger players. I mean, after you get Kamara, Chubb, Cook, Derrick Henry, Travis Kelsey off the board. If we had to pick a couple more players to fall out of relevance in dynasty fantasy football over the next three years, it's tough because you have rookies like London, like Traylon Burks. You have a core asset in DJ Moore that has proven his ability with horrendous quarterback play. So if I had to, I, I would go with a couple of the younger running backs that dealt with significant injuries because you could easily see a very similar situation like we already discussed cmc saquon barkley an injury their value goes to the roof i would go with dobbins or cam Akers potentially falling out of this group if, if i had to do it because i will say while i love cam Akers, the upside in that offense hell i gotta admit that the floor is very low he the man tore his achilles like eight months ago now, let's go over to round four. You're going to see that the bust rate here remains very, very high. You actually get Sammy Watkins, Nikhil Harry. What well, was hilarious is I forgot. I truly forgot that back in the day, if you had Damian Williams, this is like, this is like right when we started the YouTube channel. You had Damian Williams. You go out there and trade him for a 2020 first round pick. Damian Williams was going in round four of startup drafts. People convinced themselves that Damian Williams 
was a long-term option. Marlon Mack, Corey Davis, Baker Mayfield, all in this range, falling out of relevance. Now, if we go over and we look at this year's draft, I mean, you have guys like Kenneth Walker. So a younger option, I mean, Walker, of course, he could go out there and just ultimately bust. But I would say it's unlikely, given the investment made into him, given the fact that we could think that he just walks into that volume starting in 2023 once you have Rashad Penny off the roster. And you also have guys like Patrick Mahomes, Michael Pibben, Terry McLaurin, guys that look like cornerstone assets for your team. So if I had to go through and pick some names, I think we would go with, obviously, a couple of the aging players, Mike Evans, Aaron Jones, Amari Cooper. Those are the easy names to pick off the list. Once we go younger, I would say Bateman, because when we're looking at a Rashad Bateman and we're comparing him to someone like Terry McLaurin, I would argue that McLaurin has a higher floor, not saying his higher ceiling, but a higher floor, given the fact that we've seen McLaurin produce. We've seen the man be a good NFL wide receiver before. Rashad Bateman, it's all a projection. Yeah, he was a great prospect, but did nothing his rookie season. We can give him the pass because it's a player that was injured, but we're talking about downsides here. We can't ignore the fact that Rashad Bateman has some serious downside. I don't want to say he's Nikhil Harry. Of course, I'm not trying to say that, but who the hell knows? Maybe that floor is lower than a lot of people assume. Then I'd also go Antonio Gibson based on what we've seen with this Washington coaching staff. Like what happens? We come out this year and they go, hell yeah. Um, Antonio Gibson, you're a first and second down running back. JD McKissick's playing on third down. And also we're going to start splitting your snaps with Brian Robinson. And if you continue to fumble the ball, hell, maybe you're getting sent to the bench. Not saying it's likely, but it's possible. And if we're going over and picking out one last player, I would go Montgomery. Now, Montgomery is interesting because he still is on that rookie contract. And Chicago is in a horrible situation. We've been talking about this for a very long time. I'm happy to see. I think maybe our channel is just getting bigger. I, I don't want to say we're affecting Dynasty ADP, but I feel like people are finally beginning to realize how bad of a situation this Chicago Bears team truly is in. I would be very surprised, very surprised if this team is ever able to go out there and draft a running back of significance over the next three to four seasons. If I'm going to be completely honest, just because God, they need receiver, they need offensive line. But nonetheless, if we are going to be looking at David Montgomery, you could see the fall off if we're projecting Chicago to be one of the worst offenses in the NFL. But of course, it, it, it's hard to project that floor. And now going over to round five, I believe like this is round five of the startup draft. This should be your fifth best player in your dynasty team. You had eight players falling out of significance in this range. Ridley, Evan Ingram, Andrew Luck, Tyler Boyd, Jarvis Landry, OJ Howard, Devontae Freeman. Freaking Tariq Cohen was here. That's what, that's what we're dealing with. Now picking out eight players in today's draft, it's tough because we don't have the easy, oh, and we'll just throw it on the 28-year-old running back. We'll just throw it on Derrick Henry saying he's not going to be much when he's 31. So it's very tough. But if we were to do so, I mean, we can pick some players that haven't necessarily shown the elite production early on in their career. Like we can go with a Devontae Smith, very similar to what we are saying with David Montgomery. I mean, with Smith here. Philadelphia Eagles passing offense, probably one of the worst passing offenses in the NFL. Of course, I mean, from a fantasy football perspective, you're ecstatic with Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I think you could say Devontae Smith is a good talent as well. I mean, a lot of people are upset with us having Devontae Smith ranked behind players like Rashad Bateman, Jamison Williams, and Chris Olave in our video yesterday. But my issue is the Philadelphia Eagles were last in pass attempts last year. Even if you project them to take a significant step forward, they're still probably going to be bottom 10. I think that's a very nice bet to make. And he's now the wide receiver too on that team. And they signed AJ Brown to that long-term deal. And if you say, okay, well, Jalen Hurts isn't going to be there forever. They're going to draft a rookie quarterback next year. This team should be pretty good. It's not like they're getting the first or second overall pick to bring in CJ Stroud, to bring in Bryce Young. I don't know. I, I don't see how the situation gets that much better for Devontae Smith anytime soon. So Smith would be a fall off. We will go through the veteran players, Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, Leonard Fournette. Those are easy to throw out there. I would also say Jerry Judy with Jerry Judy. I, I think that he's set up in a very nice spot because I'm not necessarily a believer of Cortland Sutton. I think Jerry Judy is the bona fide wide receiver one on this team, but hell, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is a team that Cortland Sutton is the wide receiver one on. I don't think so, but it's possible. And at the same time, maybe Tim Patrick, KJ Hamler continue to have a very large role 
and they don't just condense the targets between two top wide receivers like we saw in Seattle. And then I would also go Hollywood Brown. Very easy there. I mean, with Hollywood Brown, I like the upside, but the downside's clear. This is a very small, speedy wide receiver that just got traded off his original team instead of getting paid that second contract. And I'd also go Elijah Moore. Just going right back to what we were saying with someone like Devontae Smith. This is a wide receiver that's in a very bad NFL offense. This is a wide receiver that is the second option on his team, presumably. So I think if we had to pick someone, like I'm not picking Justin Herbert to fall off anytime soon. I'm not picking Jamison Williams. I'm not picking Josh Jacobs. I, I think we would go with someone like Elijah Moore, but I hope this video served its purpose of illustrating that it's very hard, very difficult to find these landmines in dynasty, but we know for a fact that there are going to be players that you are currently viewing as cornerstone assets that you are viewing as highly productive whether it's veteran or even a rookie, whatever it may be, there are going to be players over the next one to two seasons that fall off a cliff. So when we are going out of our way and we are trading away 2024 rookie picks, 2025 rookie picks, how the hell are you ever going to think about that? You could legitimately ruin your dynasty team to the point where it's almost impossible to come back. Even if you have a great team, even if you go out and you have two first round startup picks on your team, two second round startup picks, two third round startup picks, please hold on to your rookie picks whenever you can. Please, please hold on to your rookie picks until at least halfway through the season. And you're looking at your team as productive veterans and you go, you know what? I need that last push. I need to upgrade my running back too. If we are going to win in the playoffs, That's when you trade your rookie picks. Please, don't be trading away future rookie picks in May. (laughs) But I think that should be it. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I, I really hope that made sense. I hope you have a great day. I appreciate you. And I will see you with the video tomorrow.